Hi. Well, we took the uh, corms out of the uh, pre-soak and uh, they were in there for about 16 hours and they got plumped up pretty good. Uh, we pulled them out of their nest bags and kind of gave them a kind of a rinse down and then hung them out overnight. Uh, it was pretty cool and foggy here last night so it was a good night to do that. If it's, you know, warmer you need to put them in some place where they're they're not gonna you know get too dried out um, since we're kind of in fall here things are actually working out pretty well that way so we pull them out they're plumped up quite a bit and what you can see is this is uh, pretty much a plumped up one it's got maybe it can absorb a little more moisture but it's definitely been activated and uh, the important thing to note about an anemone corn is if you can see the rough top that's the top the points are the bottom. So whenever you plant, whether in the field or what, it's important to put them down this way and not this way. Uh, if you plant them upside down, you're going to have, well, not very good luck. Okay, so we made the mixture of 50% peat and 50% perlite. And what we did is we wetted this mixture down to the point where it was really damp to the touch. And the whole point of what we're trying to do is get to the point where you squeeze it, it stays somewhat intact okay but it'll easily break apart and that that's the right moisture level to get started with uh, we used to just take the mixture and we would layer it in these mesh bags we'd put a layer of peat perlite down put some more uh, anemone corms down and just layer it back and forth until we filled the bag it was quick and easy to do it that way but what we found was we were only getting about 80 to 85 percent of good pre-sprout and the remaining 15 to 20 percent was slow or maybe in some cases they were duds because they might have dried out. We came across this new idea from Forever Green Flower Company in North, Norf North Norfolk, UK or England and uh, they posted a great picture where they were using basically a 1020 type tray and they were using vermiculite in theirs uh, but they were putting in the corms and they were pre-sprouting them out. Now their spread on the corms is a little wider than ours. Um, we're kind of packing them in a 10 in a row. And this is a standard 10 inch by 20 inch tray. And so we're putting the corms close together because they're not going to be growing together. They just need to sprout. We just need to get the roots started on these guys. So uh, we're gonna pack these guys in. And so we get roughly about 200 in a tray, which isn't too bad for this size tray. But you know, if you used a larger tray, you could do more. But the whole idea about this is, is once we're finished with this, this tray is partially done. We have one down below here that is done. Oh, one of my guys fell out here. I don't know where he fell out. I think he was an extra. Okay, so this is like a completed tray where they're all laid out. And it took about a minute or two, two hands to kind of lay it out. Then the next step we're going to do is we're going to put a layer of the peat over the top. And this will give the moisture retention on the top. And it isn't really that thick of a layer on the top. You're putting only about a half inch or so, just enough really to cover the corms. And what we'll do before we put it into storage is we'll give it one last soak with the watering wand, let it drain for a little bit, and then what we can do is we can stack these guys up. We'll put them inside of a, a crate and we'll probably stack them about three high, and that'll kind of compress them down a little bit and keep, you know, help retain moisture. We'll check them, we'll check them on a regular basis, probably every couple of days or so, just to make sure we're staying damp. It's going to go down in our root cellar where it's cool at about 55 to 60 degrees. And these guys should sprout pretty fast. Now based on what the folks at Forever Green were saying is they had almost 100%. And so we're thinking, okay, that, you know, it's worth the, the extra little bit of time to lay them out instead of just stuffing them in a bag. And actually for planting purposes, it'll go pretty easy. It'll be a lot easier as we won't have any sifting or pulling apart of roots or anything that bad that will be as bad as when they're in a ball and a bag. Um, in this case, what we'll be able to do is just quickly dump them into a crate and kind of sift it out and they should bust apart real easy. Um, 200 at a, at a pop is pretty close to about 10 crates and we plan ours on a crate system. So 
that actually works pretty good. We, we do put 21 in a crate, so it might be a little short, but that's not that, that big of a deal. So we can quickly, using about, you know, 10 trays of these weave bottom trays, we can, you know, quickly stack up, uh, you know, we do, like, I think this round is about 2,000, so we'll have roughly 10 trays, which isn't that big of a deal from a storage standpoint. Um, and these go into a root cellar, not our cooler. Right, they're going into a room that uh, was originally used to store root vegetables and things of that nature. So the temperature is very steady and it's about 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure what that is in Celsius because I'm not very good at that conversion. But, um, and, the, and the whole thing is, is uh, it's pretty constant in there in temperature so there's no big fluctuation and that's perfect temperature for these guys to germinate at. And it should be pretty fast too, I would think. Uh, we've got adequate moisture around them, everything should be good. So, the next step after this, after we get these trays done, is putting them in storage and, and then we'll be planting probably in about two to three weeks. We're thinking possibly too this methodology might be faster, so we'll find out if it is or not. Maybe it shaves a few days off of the uh, pre-sprout process, um, but you know we'll find out. So until next time, we're going to uh, take a little bit of time here to get these guys going and uh, on the next video that we do regarding anemones we'll be talking about showing them plant them in the crates and showing how they came out so this is a great experiment for us so we'll see if this uh, this does work out for us so if you like what you see uh, please subscribe to our channel there's a uh, you'll probably see the, the logo emblem it's a little round emblem it'll flash near the end of this video here you can click on that and take you right to join or, uh, and if you do join, be sure to check out the other videos that are in the archives. We have about 40 videos, uh, a little more than 40 videos now, of various different things we've done here on the farm. And hopefully you can find, you know, something in there that helps you out. Also, too, if you like what you see, uh, please uh, check out our blog as well, because uh, we've got a lot of great things on that. And, um, you know, there's probably some links in here to some previous videos. If you don't want to join, you can check out a few more videos on our channel. So anyway, till next time, uh, have a good day and thanks for watching. Bye.